Canada has long prided itself on being a welcoming nation for immigrants from all over the world. However, recent years have seen a surge in newcomers, putting a strain on the country's infrastructure and social systems. This has fueled a debate about the sustainability of current immigration levels. The federal government responding to these concerns has announced a series of immigration cuts. These cuts, while modest, signal a shift in policy. The government argues that these cuts are necessary to address pressing challenges. Housing affordability is a major concern, particularly in large urban centres. The healthcare system is also facing significant pressure with long wait times for many procedures. The government believes that slowing the influx of newcomers will provide some breathing room to address these issues. The goal is to ensure that Canada can continue to welcome immigrants while maintaining the quality of life for all residents. However, these cuts have not been without controversy. Critics argue that they are short-sighted and will harm the Canadian economy in the long run. They point out that immigrants are vital to filling labour shortages and driving economic growth. Furthermore, they argue that the government should focus on investing in infrastructure and social programmes rather than limiting immigration. The debate over immigration is complex and multifaceted with no easy answers. The government's decision to cut immigration is a significant policy shift with potentially far-reaching consequences. It remains to be seen whether these cuts will achieve their intended goals of easing pressure on infrastructure and social services. What is clear is that the debate over immigration in Canada is far from over and will continue. Canada's housing market, particularly in major cities, has been a hotbed of discussion for years. The rapid urbanization and population growth have led to a surge in demand for housing. Soaring prices and low vacancy rates have made it increasingly difficult for Canadians to find affordable housing. The dream of home ownership is slipping away for many, as they face fierce competition and skyrocketing costs. The influx of immigrants while contributing to economic growth and cultural diversity has also placed additional strain on the housing market. Newcomers need places to live, adding to the already high demand. This has led some to argue that reducing immigration could help alleviate the housing crunch. They believe that fewer people entering the country would mean less competition for the limited housing stock. Proponents of this view argue that a slowdown in population growth would give the housing market time to catch up. They suggest that this pause could allow for more homes to be built and for prices to stabilise. With fewer people competing for a limited supply of homes, prices might stabilise and vacancy rates could rise. This could potentially make it easier for Canadians to find affordable housing. This in turn could make housing more affordable for everyone, including newcomers and long-term residents. A more balanced market could benefit all segments of the population. Developers, too, might find it easier to plan and build new housing projects with a more predictable population growth trajectory. This could lead to more efficient use of resources and better planning. However, the relationship between immigration and housing is complex. It's not just about numbers. It's about how we manage growth and development. While reducing immigration might offer a temporary reprieve, it is unlikely to be a long-term solution. The housing crisis is multifaceted and requires a comprehensive approach. The root causes of the housing crisis, such as zoning restrictions, slow approval processes, and a lack of investment in affordable housing need to be addressed. These systemic issues are at the heart of the problem. Moreover, immigrants themselves contribute to the demand for housing, which can stimulate construction and create jobs. They're an integral part of the economy and the housing market. Municipalities also face a difficult balancing act. They must plan for growth while ensuring that infrastructure and services keep pace. On the one hand, they need to ensure they have adequate infrastructure and services to accommodate population growth. This includes transportation, schools and healthcare facilities. On the other hand, restricting development to curb population growth can exacerbate existing housing affordability challenges. Limiting new construction can lead to even higher prices and more competition. Finding the right balance between managing growth and ensuring adequate housing supply is crucial. It's a delicate equilibrium that requires careful planning and foresight. Simply curtailing immigration without addressing these underlying issues might only postpone the inevitable. The housing market needs sustainable solutions that go beyond short-term fixes. 
A comprehensive approach that tackles both the supply and demand sides of the housing equation is necessary to achieve lasting affordability and sustainability in the Canadian housing market. This means investing in affordable housing, streamlining approval processes, and planning for future growth in a balanced way. Canada's publicly funded healthcare system, a source of national pride, has been facing growing pains for several years now. Long wait times for specialist appointments and procedures have become a chronic issue, impacting the quality of care and Canadians' overall well-being. These delays can lead to worsening health conditions and increased stress for patients and their families. The COVID-19 pandemic further exposed the vulnerabilities of the system, highlighting the need for increased capacity and resources. Hospitals were overwhelmed and healthcare workers faced unprecedented challenges working tirelessly to save lives. In this context, the impact of immigration on the healthcare system has become a topic of intense debate. Some believe that reducing immigration could help alleviate the pressure on healthcare services. Some argue that a pause in immigration could provide a much needed opportunity to allow the healthcare system to catch up. This pause could enable healthcare facilities to better manage their resources and improve service delivery. With a slower pace of population growth, the demand for healthcare services might ease, giving hospitals and clinics some breathing room. This could lead to more manageable workloads for healthcare professionals. This could translate into shorter wait times, improved working conditions for healthcare professionals, and a better overall patient experience. Patients would receive timely care, and healthcare workers would have a more balanced work life situation. Additionally, it could allow more time for training and integrating newly arrived healthcare professionals into the Canadian system. Proper training ensures that healthcare workers are well prepared to meet the needs of patients. However, it's important to acknowledge that immigrants, including healthcare professionals, also play a crucial role in strengthening the healthcare system. They bring diverse skills and perspectives that enhance the quality of care. Canada faces a significant shortage of doctors, nurses and other healthcare workers, particularly in rural and remote areas. These regions often struggle to attract and retain healthcare professionals. Immigrants often fill these gaps, providing essential care to communities across the country. Their contributions are vital in ensuring that all Canadians have access to healthcare services. Reducing immigration could exacerbate these shortages, further straining the system. This could lead to even longer wait times and reduced access to care particularly in underserved areas. Therefore, while a temporary slowdown in immigration might offer some respite, it is not a sustainable solution to the deep-rooted challenges facing the Canadian healthcare system. Comprehensive reforms are needed to address these issues effectively. Addressing these challenges requires a multi-pronged approach, including increased investment in healthcare infrastructure, streamlining the recognition of foreign credentials for healthcare professionals, and implementing innovative models of care delivery. These measures can help build a more resilient healthcare system. Ultimately, the goal should be to create a healthcare system that is both responsive to the needs of a growing and diverse population and equipped to provide timely and high-quality care to all Canadians, regardless of their origin. By working together, we can build a stronger, more inclusive healthcare system for the future. Canada's labour market has long relied on immigration to fill critical shortages and drive economic growth. Immigrants have been integral in various sectors, contributing not only to the workforce but also to the cultural and social fabric of the nation. However, with the government's recent decision to reduce immigration levels, concerns have been raised about the potential impact on key sectors of the economy. This policy shift has sparked debates among policymakers, economists and business leaders. Industries already grappling with labour shortages such as construction, healthcare and technology are particularly vulnerable to these changes. These sectors have historically depended on the steady influx of immigrant workers to sustain their growth and meet increasing demands. The construction industry, for instance, relies heavily on immigrant labour to meet the demands of a growing population and ageing infrastructure. 
Immigrants often fill roles that are difficult to staff with local workers, ensuring that projects stay on track. A reduction in immigration could exacerbate existing labour shortages, potentially leading to project delays, increased costs and slower economic growth. This could have a ripple effect, impacting related industries and the overall economy. Similarly, the healthcare sector, already facing staffing challenges, might struggle to fill vacancies and maintain service levels with a smaller pool of potential immigrant workers. This could affect patient care and increase the burden on existing staff. The technology sector, a key driver of innovation and economic competitiveness, is also heavily reliant on immigrant talent. Immigrants bring diverse perspectives and skills that are crucial for innovation and problem solving. Canada's ability to attract and retain highly skilled tech workers from around the world has been crucial to its success in this sector. The tech industry thrives on global talent and any reduction in immigration could stifle its growth. However, reduced immigration levels, coupled with increasingly competitive global markets for talent, could hinder the growth and innovation potential of Canada's tech industry. Companies may find it harder to recruit the expertise they need to stay competitive. The long-term impact of immigration cuts on the labour market remains to be seen. It's a complex issue with potential consequences that could unfold over many years. While some argue that it could lead to higher wages for Canadian workers as the supply of labour tightens, others believe that the benefits may be short-lived. Others fear that it could stifle economic growth and make it harder for businesses to find the skilled workers they need to thrive. The challenge lies in balancing these competing interests, finding the right balance between addressing concerns about infrastructure and public services, while ensuring a steady flow of skilled labour is essential for Canada's continued economic prosperity. Policymakers must carefully consider the long-term implications of immigration policies to support sustainable growth.